Good afternoon, everybody. It is Tuesday, and that means it's time for our Tuesday topic, a discussion of a very important white paper. Hello, I'm Christopher Tipper, CEO and founder of Hunter Benefits and co-host of our On the Couch video series with Catherine and Christina, who hosts our Washington Update, is here with me to talk about a very important, very, very topical conversation, cybersecurity. And the reason why we're talking about this is because the Department of Labor recently, I can't remember, it's been a couple of weeks now, right? A couple of weeks, yeah. The, yeah While the people are digesting. Right. The Department of Labor has released a best practices paper, and we are going to spend the next three months worth of white papers discussing the Department of Labor's best practices. It's going to take three videos. We were thinking about doing it all in one, right? Yeah, but and, there's a lot of And then we decided nobody was going to watch any of it. So. There's a lot of terms, you yeah. know. I like spent two hours researching terms and going, oh, I can't have this done. No. So, so we're doing the simple one today. So this is, this is, this is the intro, kind of. And uh, cybersecurity, a, a, a very serious topic, very near and dear to our heart with us being third-party administrators. So, take it away, Christina. Yes. What, very important topic, cybersecurity. Yes. Okay. Yes. How can participants threaten the security of qualified plan information? I did not think we would be starting off from the point of view of participants. Well, they're sneaky little people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they can do unexpected things. Um, Which is not the official position of Hunter Benefits. Okay. <laughs> Says the Human Resources Department. Human Resources. <laughs> We're being real time fact check, Christina. <laughs> oh, yeah. This, okay. this is more serious than our on the couch, but every so often we can't help ourselves. Well, we can't help yeah. ourselves. Okay. I, think, I think it's just the creativity and the, the amount of craziness that they can bring home. Okay. A participant. Now, how many participants write down their passwords? Uh, probably a lot. I'm going to say 99% yeah. write them down. So that means that they're written down someplace. They may not be associated with a username, or they may not be associated with the account it goes to, but they're written down someplace. So right there, you have a hole. Okay. The other hole that you have that you you could have that you and I were talking about right, earlier right. was the fact that there are participants who like, eh, they'll send me a statement. They've never logged on. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know when this was, but it's 15 ish years ago. Uh, I had some statistics from a record keeper that only 2% of most planned participants had ever logged in online. And right now the participant who's never logged in at all and has never called in is the weakest link, right? Yes, yeah. very much so. Because there's no profile and somebody can substitute they can in their own profile. Yep. Yes, yep. you have that nephew visiting for the first time in years and well, things are forgotten. all sorts of things. All sorts of Not things. Not just nephews. All right. so, so why should the planned fiduciaries be concerned about participants' knowledge and understanding of cybersecurity? Well, if your participants don't understand it, they're more likely to leave things open and thus risk everybody's account balance in a qualified plan. So if I'm not aware that I should change my password every once in a while, and I have the same one, and I okay. use the same one for many accounts, it's very vul it makes the qualified plan very vulnerable to attack just right. by typing So if in. Fred Flintstone's account is vulnerable, Barney Rubble's could also be because they can get into the plan. They can get in, yes. All right. Yes. Um, so one of the things we're talking about is is passwords, all right? Yeah. And, and, and we were talking about not writing stuff down. Yeah. So why shouldn't dictionary be words used in a password? That seems like it'd, it'd be really helpful. It, well, you know, and they told me it was a password. <laughs> <laughs> and don't so use password. I, I spent so much time figuring out words right, that right. I would associate with the right, right. 
the place I was, now you're telling me I can't use a word because somebody else could associate that same word and all they need is my username and poof, they're in. I felt like one password allows you to actually pick a password that has words associated with it. It does, but that's a password manager. Right, mm. so used within a password manager, it would be possible, but as part of your write on post-it notes and keep them all over your desk. Right, yeah, yeah the idea problem. is using words and written post-it notes is, is a bad thing. So what are password managers? Password managers do exactly that. They manage your passwords, they save your password. You only need to remember in most cases, one password to access right. that password manager, and it will log in for you. Okay. And and it has a retrieval mechanism in case you forget that one right, password right. that you did not write down. Anywhere. Right, that would be bad because then you've written well, them all down. If, when you go to the website, and if you, it'll actually go, hey, this is your password for that website. Yeah. It, it lets you know. But yeah. I think I would say the strongest thing is it yells at you if you repeat your password between oh. different things. Password. Oh. Pa that's one of the things that a password manager can do. Right. Is is help you not use the same password twice. But there are also password managers that will change your password automatically oh. as you go from. Very cool. Yeah. Very so cool. So you never know what your password is Which for is, that account. As long as you can get into the changed. password manager. Exactly. Right. Now, um, one of the things that uh, we see happen a lot, and we know there's a variety of ways of, of uh, helping to train um, employees about this, we'll be talking about this in, a, in another video, is how can a participant tell if that person is getting a phishing email? Oh my gosh. Well, apparently they don't use spell check or grammar <laughs> check. <laughs> well, yeah. Some of them are getting better. They're getting, okay? they're getting well, better. Well, darn, they finally figured out where the spell check was. All Too right. bad. <laughs> um, they no, also, that is a very good first clue. If yeah. They can't, if they can't spell your name right or anything. But... So, so what, what, are, what are ways that participants can figure out if they're getting a phishing If email? you're getting an email from somebody you never expected to get an email from, is a company you don't do business with, it's a person you don't even know, don't open it. Where did I, and somewhere, I don't know if it was in relationship to this or something else, but uh, in, in reference to phishing emails, the shorter the time frame you need to act, oh yeah, the more likely it's a bad email, the it's a bad actor. The more they pressure you to get things done, the more likely it is that they're just hurrying you so that you give them what they want so they can run off and use it right before anybody else knows that this is happening right so yeah. the, there's and another way i think is there's something about mismatches with uh the sender who it says it's from is not really who it's from right so if you look there'll be a name there and then there'll be the email or the the address and it doesn't match the name right and, and I think one of the most important, the, 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 the biggest safety tip for preventing you from being the victim of a phishing attack is learning how to hover, okay? Right? I mean, seriously, you yeah. hover the, not click, you hover okay. the mouse over your links because you want to see what it says to make sure that it is who it, it, who it says it is, right? Yeah. The, so so I, I know we've talked, we, we started off talking about the Department of Labor, and here it seems like we're picking on participants. Well, we're not really picking on participants, but this is an area of concern from the Department of Labor's best practices, right? This is one of the places where it's the easiest for a participant to help. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that true? Mm hmm Okay. Well, yeah. This is called the human firewall sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Right. So you can create can create other firewalls, but your your staff being cognizant of these issues helps with the human firewall. Do you remember the I Love You virus? Oh my good night. Oh, that's really Way back, old. I had just started working for this company and the president of the company got the I Love You email and sent it to everybody 
in the company. <laughs> oh, I think it was on that email. <laughs> I yeah. think I got, oh, yes. And I had only been working there like a week, you know, so I'm getting this email from the president of the company with the subject, I love you, and it was like, <gasps> HR. I wasn't quite sure how to take that. <laughs> it was fraternal love. It was it fraternal love. It wasn't the company culture you expected. No, no it no, was not. No. And so this can happen to owners and officers of companies as well as rank of file employees. Anybody who spends any time on a computer on behalf of a company can leave that company vulnerable. Good point. I think one of the things that we're going to be discussing a little bit more in depth in video two and video three is that the financial advisors and the plan sp sponsors can think, okay, it's the participant's responsibility. And conversely, the participants can not think, okay, everybody else is taking care of me. Everybody has uh, a role in this. Right. And one of the things we're going to talk about, um, uh, we're going to talk about the, the lady in Spain. Yes. I'm just going to tee it up right now. We're going to close it in video three. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting story. I thought a little bit of a geek. All right. About a person who would retired to Spain and had to go through quite some lengths to finally get her retirement account balance um, sent to her. So we'll talk about that a little bit more in yeah. future videos. Is she the lady in red? No, the lady in Spain. We don't know. It, it, she yeah. could wear any color. She could wear any color. <laughs> All right. But so, we, have, we have this scenario where, you know, now I've lost my, my Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just took it and <laughs> threw it away. <laughs> away. You know, it, it's not just the participants, but a participant who logs into their account and double checks their deposits for That's their withholding right. Right. Uh, every payday. That's your best person to find a problem as soon as it happens. The interesting thing about that is that financial advisors have sometimes told me that from uh, a financial planning point of view, that's the worst because they're paying too much attention to what's going on in the account balance. But from a cybersecurity point of view, it's, it's a nice double check to make sure that the right stuff is going to the to right To the place. right account. Yeah. And it's not so much that you're checking the, the, the investments. Right. What you're checking is, are the deposits right? Yep. Is the new money the right new money? Coming in. Yeah. And are there withdrawals? And if there are withdrawals, to whom no, were to they paid? <laughs> yeah. You, know? yeah they, you should not have surprise withdrawals coming no. out of your account. Never. So. All right. Yes. And so, I think sometimes also in terms of cyber crime, they start with small amounts first, and then they see how they can go bigger. And so if you're paying attention, you may be able to stop it at the beginning. Yeah. Right. So. Exactly. All right. So we've got a little bit more to, to discuss with videos two and three coming to us in June and July. Yes. Video two uh, talks about the best practices for the employer to have in place. We're focused just on the employer. And then video three is talking about the DOL tips for hiring a service provider. Ah. Or an investment person. Now, I want to change that. Not tips for hiring, but tips for how to be hired. Okay. <laughs> A good point. Okay. Because, it's, yes. you know, your, your service provider has to have everything in place to help protect all of your information. Right. And the money for the participants. Otherwise, what's, what's the point? Yeah. What's the point? <laughs> what's the, absolutely. What's the point? Just my open the box and let anybody in. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Christina. I know it's going to be a good white paper to read. So um, thank you very much, everybody. And uh, any further questions, any specifics about this, any other issues, any other video we've done, it's sales at hunterbenefits.com. The website, of course, is hunterbenefits.com. And you're going to like, share, subscribe, comment, do all that other good stuff. Let your friends know about us. All right. And we'll see you again next month. Take care.